narrow-minded, ambitious, greedy persons in the government. This is the 17th century, 18th century. So that is a story. The context of the Philippines and the occupation of Manila is just one incident. One honorable mention of the Francisco Leandro de Vian is the honorable member of the audience, as we just mentioned. He, uh, he was accused by the Archbishop, of, he was condemned not just accused, by the Archbishop as a traitor because of, the, of, what, of what he was doing. Get, uh, having contacts with the Ande, etc., etc. And so he escaped and was a good, great help for Ande's resistance. Then after that, he again did something for the government. The Filipinos, they reacted variously. Paranaque, in the line between Cavite and Manila, stood loyally to the government. Las Piñas, where you first grew pineapple from Mexico, is so called because the Augustinians introduced the pineapple in Las Piñas. That's why it's called Las Piñas. So anyway, but they stood loyally with the friars and they were behind the government of Manila. In Paksanghan, the townsville killed their alcalde mayor because he was abusive. They saw the opportunity. Let's kill him. That's all. Now notice various uh, reactions. Cavite and Laguna was, uh, well, shall we say, this not really destroyed, but ruined by, not really ruined, but, uh, no, no. Bands of gangsters burned the estates of the friars in Laguna and Cavite. There was nobody there now, no, no authority. Pampanga and Bulacan stood behind their Augustinian friars. As we just mentioned, Diego Silang led an uprising in Ilocos and Juan de la Cruz Palaris in Pangasinan. Fed by the rumor that in Manila now, there were no longer any Spaniards. Pangasinan sent a volunteer group, but when they reached Bulacan, after Manila had fallen, the rumor spread around. The Spaniards are all gone, and so they went back to Pangasinan. Juan de la Cruz Palaris started his revolution. But he could not again fulfill his promises to the people. And remember, the revolution would destroy crops. And over the months, there would be no harvest. The people were hungry. They had no food. And he soon had to hide because people were turning against him. He would sneak into his sister's house for food. And this sister reported him to the government. And that's how they caught Juan de la Cruz Palaris and executed him. So, it's, it's a, that kind of thing. It's a, somebody should write a television program about this. The reaction, the, the social situation. <laughs> the social situation in the Philippines. We don't read this in the books. That, that idea, for example, uh, when I bear message this to my class, I said, some of you write this script about a girl riding a horse and the people would jeer at her, her because she would lose her honor. Which is not true today. The kind of thing, the human element of our society, and it, is, it comes out here, the good and the bad side of our society. As for the Chinese, uh, they also, you mentioned the Chinese mestizos, they stood by waiting where the wind would blow. But they paid the perquisites that the, the British demanded, taxes and so on. But they continued their business because they paid the British. They were not disturbed, waiting for. And Anda was so angry at them that at one time he executed about 2,000 of them because of this wishy-washy uh, wishy -washy attitude. Mm. The hero of the story is Simon de Ada y Salazar, a successful lawyer in Madrid when he was a, he was an appointed <coughs> member of the Audiencia in Manila, 1755. He arrived six years later, 1761, and when the bishop, when the British appeared, he was appointed to start the what's this the resistance movement to lead the resistance movement because the older members refused to take it. 
He escaped. If you go to, in, to Fort Santiago, that gate there, the Postigo Wall, where there is a gate there, uh, down the passage, or up the passage, and then into Bulacan. <coughs> and he made Bacalor his, what's his, his uh, center of resistance. What did he need? Funds, of course. And who were these funds with him? Just three. His son, Thomas, a miner, and then a compatriot, Bartola and Bustos. St. Thomas, his son. He needed the funds. Here is where the Franciscans and the friar orders helped very much. The Augustinians produced by producing cannons and gunpowder. Archbishop Rojo condemned their provincial superiors as traitor for supporting Anda. But several Augustinian friars were imprisoned or shipped to London. Their gold and silver and church, uh, church and ornaments, their library, were all stolen. We do not know what they had left because during the Japanese war that place was flattened. Sorry, but we know that they lost quite a lot. Mm. The Dominicans offered also men and supplies. Their church, which now that right the RCBC bank there in Intramuros when you come up from under the you know that bank there that was their church looted to the tune of 11,000 pesos gold and silver ornaments vestments books and so on one friar organized a group of college students at USD and they fought the British earning from the king later on a very well, a very flattering phrase of courage and uh, thanksgiving. You stood by, etc. Hmm. The Franciscans, three things are credited to them. One, they transferred to safety the existing public funds, 11,000 pesos, uh, to a place of safety outside Intramuros. Now, remember that 11,000 pesos is a big money. Why? One peso is the yearly tribute of the ordinary Filipino. If you have 11,000 pesos, that's quite a lot. And this is what they moved into safety because the Franciscans thought of it as soon as the fleet appeared. When uh, Rojo surrendered, the British demanded the treasury, the funds of the Manila treasury, and he sent people to the Franciscans in Laguna to get back the money. They refused. In fact, they quarreled physically. They, they, they fought fist fights with the messengers of Rojo who were trying to grab the money now because they knew where it was hidden. And his, the men of the Franciscan uh, defeated the messengers of Rojo and he sent the money instead to Anda in Bacolor. The first, uh, the, first, well, the first supply of money was he used to buy uniforms, etc., to organize his army of resistance. Second, they recruited men to help the resistance movement from Laguna, Camarines, and so on. Now, of course, there are no names that are mentioned. Third, at this time, the situado, you know, the, the silver annual shipment from Mexico to subsidize the Manila government, was approaching. How did they know it? A pilot sailed into Manila Bay so innocently to bring you that the Galeon, El Filipino, the, the real name is Nuestra Señora del Rosario, was coming in with the situado. The British caught him. <laughs> they also knew the, that this Galeon was coming in. But Anda had heard of it before the British heard of it, through the Franciscans. And he sent men to get the money. What did the Franciscans do? By flares from summer and the Camarina shore, they signaled the galleon not to proceed across the San Bernardino Strait, but stop in Palapag Samar, where they unloaded the money and had it shouldered from summer, the Bicol region, across the mountains to Pampanga, the fund that, well, subsidized the resistance movement. How much was it? Uh, I, I, maybe 22,280,000 plus pesos. That's quite a lot of money. Uh, the Situado. The British were there. 
They went to San Bernardino Strait, waiting for the galleon. The men 